History is not to be read. History is to be reflected upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in their stories, Ibra. Ibra means lessons. Many of us have been dealt with unjustly, may have been oppressed, our rights may have been taken away from us. Someone out there may have said something that may have hurt us, actually hurt our hearts. Yet how is it that we respond? Respond. One lesson that emerges from the life of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al Kaab. character from which there are so many lessons that can be learned which can be applied to our everyday lives there are a number of titles that the Imam was known by the title that he is given is an Kaaf it highlights a wonderful characteristic and a moral principle known as restraint and forbearance at the time of anger and displeasure. Imam السلام, emerged with this title because during his time there was widespread oppression and injustice against the followers of Ali Muhammad. And yet he would reciprocate this with kindness, with generosity, with the principles of akhlaq making him the walking Qur'an, the walking Qur'an. A man one day comes to Imam Al-Kadhim alayhi salam. He comes to him and he starts insulting him in Masjid Rasulullah, in the Prophet's Masjid. People want to kill him. Imam says, leave him. But then he goes back. Imam al kadhim the next day rides his donkey and he goes to his farm. He was a farmer. He enters into his farm. This man starts shouting, what are you doing? You're destroying my crops. Imam al kadhim continues to come. Then Imam al kadhim alayhi salam says, how much is this crop that I have destroyed worth? How much? He said, maybe you give him a figure. Let's say 100 dinars. He said, here is a bag with 1,000 dinars. Take it. It's all yours. It's a gift. And Imam al kadhim then leaves and goes to the masjid. Then this man comes following Imam al kadhim alayhi salam and he starts praising him, honoring him. And then Imam al kadhim alayhi salam told his companions, he said, what is better? What you wanted to do and kill this man yesterday? Or look at him now. He's become one of our companions. They said, yes, Ibn Rasulullah. The idea of Qadm al ghayb is that people are in the position to retaliate and ask for retribution. Like what? Like the husband in the household. When he sees the children or the wife doing something that may hurt him is in a position to retaliate would he hold back his anger yet when we swallow our anger understandably the first element of this moral principle demonstrated by Imam Musa ibn Ja'far is established not only do you swallow your anger but you also forgive those who have hurt you at the same time Imam Musa ibn Ja'far one day he was approached by a servant who was carrying a bowl of hot water. You've all heard this story before. She drops this hot bowl of water onto the Imam. Now picture yourself. Put yourself in the position of this lady. And the Imam, and what would you do? What would you say? How would you reciprocate what had happened? This lady would know how to speak to the grandson of Rasulullah. She would speak to him using the Quran. She would say to him, what? al Those who swallow the anger. Imam would say, Laqad kavamtu ghayri. Don't worry, I've swallowed my anger. She says to him, Wal'afina anil nas. Those who forgive the people. 
Imam alayhi salam says, لَقَدْ عَفَوْتُ عَنْكِ I have forgiven you, don't worry. She concludes the verse by saying, وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah loves the good doers. Imam says to her, إِذْهَبِي فَأَنْتِ حُرَّ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Not only did he swallow his anger, not only did he forgive her, but he also reciprocated the bad with good. Another title is بَابُ الْحَوَائِجْ the gate by which the hajat and the needs of the human beings are fulfilled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The door towards the answering of prayers. Because an Imam al Kalam never in his life did he reject anyone and say no. He always put others before himself. He was altruistic. <clears throat> he took care of others before himself. He had learned. After all, his grandmother, Fatima Tazdara had taught, had taught his great uncle, Al Imam Al Hassan, Al Ja Your neighbor, your friend, your companion before yourself. Put others before yourself. And this is why he was known. He is known as Babu al Hawaj, not only during his life, but even after his death. That people from all around the world, they go to Al Imam Al Kadhim alayhi salam and they seek their hajat. They ask Allah for their hajat for the sake of the Imam and they are granted their hajat. <laughs> not from the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt. His name was Abu Ali al-Khalal. He himself has written in his works that when I have a problem in my life, when I need something to be fulfilled, I go to the shrine of Musa ibn Ja'far and I ask Allah in the shrine of Musa ibn Ja'far and it is indeed fulfilled. Ali ibn Yaqteen. Yaqteen, the father of Ali ibn Yaqteen, used to trade in fragrance. And at the time of the Umayyads, or the Umayyads, he used to come out and he used to praise Bani Hashim and curse the Umayyads. The Abbasids, when they attained power, when they got the power, they loved him, they liked him because he had spoken against the Umayyads and therefore they wanted to appoint his son Ali to take a ministerial position. Imam was approached by Ali ibn Aqteen. Ali ibn Aqteen asked him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, what should I do? Should I take this position or not? Imam said to him, Ala anna lillahi awliya fi abwaab al-zalama. In other words, you go ahead, yet with a condition. And the condition is when someone comes to you, one of the believers, and requires something to be done and completed or fulfilled, you should not hesitate and you should do it. In other words, you should facilitate, you should make things easy for people. The Imam السلام, encouraged the fulfilling of the need. The hadith states, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ إِلَى اللَّهِ إِذَا أَدْخَلَ السُّرُورَ فِي قَلْبِ أَخِيهِ الْمُؤْمِنِ this man by the name of Ibrahim al-Jamal, Ibrahim al-Jamal comes, there is another individual, wants something fulfilled. Ibrahim al-Jamal immediately knows what to do, goes, comes back. Imam alayhi salam asks him, oh Ibrahim, did you fulfill it? Ibrahim says, لَقَدْ قَضَاهَ اللَّهِ Allahu Akbar. Look at those companions next to the Imam. They wouldn't even say, I have done it. Allah has fulfilled it. Imam alayhi salam would say to him, by God, the fulfilling of the hajar of the believers is more pleasurable to me than the performance of the tawaf for an entire week around the holy If each and every one of us rose to the responsibility and understood from the life of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far and his companions and what he did, then our situation would be much better. As a follower of the Imam, am I even performing a fraction of what the Imam teaches me. Although the Imam was not wealthy, but whoever was in need, the Imam would give him or her 
Torah as much as he could. He was known for his kindness, he was known for his generosity, and that this generosity was not for fame. Because publicly sometimes, and I say this about myself, maybe I might help someone publicly, and I'm doing so what? Not necessarily for the sake of Allah, but so that my friend, my neighbor, my co-worker can see me and say, MashaAllah, look at this person, he's giving money, he's giving help, he's dedicating his time, his efforts. We look for what? We look for recognition, we look for praise. When the Imams, they would help, they would not look for recognition, they would do so what? إِنَّمَا نُطَعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ was the sincerity that they had. And to prove this sincerity, the Imam was not only known to publicly help people, but even privately. We encourage others to help too. But what is also important that we keep some of this help and some of this assistant what? Secret. Private, just between me and Allah. The Imam السلام, would walk past a house in which music is being played. A servant outside is bringing the rubbish or the garbage. He asks her, the owner of the house that the music inside is being played, is he a slave or is he a master? She responds back by saying, indeed, he is a master. Imam السلام, would say to her, if he was a slave, he would have respected his master. And he moves on. The lady goes back. The man inside by the name of Bishr, says to her, who did you speak to? She describes this man that she saw. He immediately recognizes that this is a noble individual, a virtuous man. Tell me, what is it that she, he said? She responds back by saying that he said, if the man inside the house was a slave, he would have respected his master. That statement hit hard in the heart of this man, Bishr, who runs barefooted to catch Imam Musa ibn Ja'far and says to him, Sayyidi wa Mawlai, Halli min tawbah. Imam al kawam sallallahu alayhi wa one day he sat down with a black person. Socially he is, does not have a big status or anything. Simple man. But Imam al kawam wants to demonstrate there's no difference except by taqwa. And then Imam al kawam said to him, do you have anything I could help you with? Can I help you with anything? Do you have a need? Do you have a haja? Some people who were with the Imam, you know, they exploded. They couldn't. They said, who is he? Who is he? He is a person who's a nobody. Why do you, first of all, you sat down with him. Now you ask him, can I help you with something? Who is he to help him with anything? So Imam al kawam looked at them and said, whoa, hold on a minute. He said, عبد من عبيد الله وأخ في كتاب الله وجار في بلاد الله. So even if he's not a Muslim, at least he's a neighbor. Even if he's not a Muslim, يجمعنا وإياه خير الآباء. You know, he's from Adam and I'm from Adam. وأفضل الأديان. What's the difference? They work to abolish these differences. Black, white, Arab, non-Arab. This is all nonsense. How many of us have that akhlaq of Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam? When he was placed in the prisons that he in his prayers and supplications, he would be thanking Allah, he would say, Oh Allah, I, would, I prayed that you would give me time, solitude, time to spend alone with you and you have answered my prayers. but as an opportunity to do what? To devote more time to Allah for prayers. 
when Allah takes our health away from us, let's make that into an opportunity. When Allah tests us, let's make that into an opportunity. He was known as Zaymul Mujtahideen. Imam Musa ibn Ja'far ibn Qadim in his prison cell would be in sujood from the morning until Maghrib time. We are not expected to stay in sujood in prostration from sunrise until morning. No, we're not expected to do this. But we have to ask ourselves, what am I doing? As a follower of the Imam, am I even performing a fraction of what the Imam teaches me when it comes to my worship and dedication to Muslim? How many times have I prostrated in sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you know what the Imam would say? Ilahi عظم الذنب من عبدك فليحسن العفو عندك Allah, the servant that has come before you, his sins are indeed too many to recall. Yet I know you are the most generous and you are the most compassionate and you are the one who is oft forgiving. Do I remember to seek forgiveness on a daily basis? The Imam who is an infallible, we believe he's an infallible Masoon, every day he would ask for forgiveness 5,000 times. Imam Musa ibn Ja'far, the principles and the values by which he established during his lifetime are truly ones that should be disseminated and spread in order for others to reap the fruits of his teachings and his illustrious life.